Welcome to another great episode right here on IT Pro TV. You're watching the CompTIA IT Fundamental Show. I'm your host, Ronnie Wong, and today we'll be configuring a wireless router. And here, of course, to help us out as we do this is going to be Mr. Don Vazette himself. Don, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, Ronnie. And I'm excited to get in here and do a little hands on demonstration. <laughs> you know, some of our episodes we spend a lot of time talking about concepts and, and theory and all, which is important, but it is kind of fun to get right. your get your hands dirty and get in there and do some work. So in this episode, like Ronnie said, we're going to take a standard wireless router, right, that most people have in their homes these days, small offices, small businesses. These are really, really common devices that can be a little challenging to set up the very first time you do it, but also can be misconfigured to leave you susceptible to being uh, attacked or taken advantage of. So we want to make sure that we get in and get one of these devices set up correctly. So I'm going to walk you through the process of taking a, a brand new router, getting it configured, getting it operational, testing and verifying connectivity, and then getting ready to turn loose onto the masses so that we can have wireless internet in our home or office. All right, so Don, if this is our first encounter with trying to set up a wireless router, I know the very first time I ever tried to do this, it was confusing to me as I read the instructions said, just go to the web page on the router. And I said, there's no web, how do I get access to this web page here? And what is it that I'm actually configuring? So I had to read the instructions a little bit further, but then I started figuring it out so, Don, where are we going to take this approach from? All right. So, the thing about a, uh, a router, when you get it, is that it's expecting you to be on a, a network, or it's expecting to be creating a network. But your device doesn't know about that network yet. So, there's kind of a disconnect in between you and this new device, and we've got to kind of cross the boundaries. But the challenge that we run into is that all the different vendors that are out there kind of handle it a different way. It's not really consistent. So, when it comes to setting up a wireless router, step one, is buying the router, right? You've got to you've got to go to Best Buy or um, Target, Walmart. You know, pretty much everywhere sells these these routers these days. Uh, you know, I, I normally go to Best Buy, and when you go there, they have 10, 15 different wireless routers that you can pick from. And depending on which brand you buy, the configuration is going to be a little bit different. So what I'm going to show you here in this episode is going to be using a Linksys router. And so if you have a Linksys router, these steps will pretty much be the same for you. If you have a Netgear or D-Link, TP-Link, uh, you know, any of the, the various other vendors that are out there, the steps are the same, but the actual screens that you see will look different. The configuration numbers might be a little bit different as well, so something we have to be aware of. So after we purchase the router, the next step is figuring out how that vendor wants us to set that up. And they do that usually by including a quick start guide with the device when you purchase it, right? And so as you open the box, you've got it right there. You've got a quick start guide. Well, I've got my router right here, and I, I don't have the box. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the quick start guide. I just have the router sitting right here with a power adapter. So I don't have any of that information. And it can be a little intimidating because when we look at the back, right, if I look at the back of this device, I see it's got a lot of different ports on it. And the ports are labeled and numbered and, and have all sorts of different stuff on there that means something different different, right? And, and if I've worked with these a lot, then maybe it does make a, a bunch of sense to me. But if this is my first time, I'm going to figure out, like, what? why is this port yellow? Why, why are these ports blue? Hey, here's a blue port over here. What? What's up with that? And it looks different. And, and here's this black port almost hidden that, that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, there's a power switch. All right, got that one, right? I, I can understand that. But what is supposed to be plugged in where? And once I'm plugged in, how am I supposed to be able to communicate? That's all stuff that we need to figure out. Now, from there, how do we figure it out? Well, hopefully that quick start guide. Now, if you've lost yours, like, like I apparently have, it's probably around here somewhere <laughs> if I dug for it. The best thing to do is to go to that vendor's website. So, for example, this is a Linksys one. If I go to the Linksys website, right on their support page, they've got this router. This is a Linksys WRT1900ACS. You might ask how I remember that, and the short answer is it's written on the bottom. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, written on the bottom of these devices, it'll normally tell you the model number, uh, and it says that this one is a uh, uh, WRT 1900 ACS. And from here, I can come in and I can pull the user guide. And that user guide is what's going to give me all the information I need to get this thing set up. That user guide has a lot more information in there, too, of a lot more than I actually want. But at a minimum, it's going to tell me what all the ports are on the back of the device, and it's going to tell me how to do that initial configuration. And if I just scroll kind of through, I'm, I'm going to skip past a lot of this, uh, because it's what's going to give me that just overall view. And what I'm looking for when I set up a new wireless router are three things. One, the power light. How do I know it's turned on? It, and it sounds funny, 
But some of these devices, it's hard to tell if they're turned on or not. And so when I look at this router, there's a number of different lights on the front of it. And I can see right there that universal power symbol on the light that's far most to the left. And if I scroll to the next page, they kind of drill into this a little more and there's the power indicator. And it gives me a little more information about that power indicator. It says the power icon LED is solid white while the router is powering on. It will blink when the router goes through its self-diagnostic mode during every boot up. All right, that's important because it tells me when I turn it on, that thing's going to start blinking. And that means the router's not ready yet. I need to wait. And when it's solid, that means the router is ready. If I try and set it up while it's still blinking, it's still booting up. It's probably not going to work, right? This leads to a lot of confusion with people. They plug in a new router and just expect it to instantly work. Routers are computers. They, they boot up just like your laptop or your desktop does. You have to give them a chance to do that. Now, I'm going to pretty much ignore the rest of these lights because the rest of these lights are really reflecting the ports on the back of the router. And if I scroll down to the next page, they show me that back of the router and they unveil the mystery of what each of those ports are. Now, for most of us, we're only going to care about three ports, right? One is the power connector. I need to have a power cable plugged in. I'm, I'm waving this router around and there's no power plugged into it, so it's not going to work very well for me. So I need that one. Then I need an internet connection. And see how it's showing that internet connection and it's got it lit up in yellow. And when I looked at the back of that router, I saw a port right in the middle that was yellow. So I've got that. I can match that up visually. And then the blue ports here where it just says Ethernet, right? Well, Ethernet is actually the technical standard that those cables use to communicate with. That's not very informative to us. But what that actually means is our local area network, our home, our computers. We take our computers and we plug them into these ports. And we take our internet service providers connection, which is usually a modem, maybe a cable modem, DSL modem, whatever that happens to be, and we plug that into this port, right? Those are the really the two connections I need to make. I might not even plug in anything in these blue ports. What if all of my clients are going to be wireless? These will just be empty. But this connection right here, my internet connection, that's going to have something plugged into it no matter what. I've got to plug something into it. So here in the studio, I've actually got an internet connection. It's this gray cable that I've got here in my hand. And so I'm going to take that internet connection and I'm going to plug that into the yellow port on the back of the router. So I'll just take that and I'll plug it in. Now I'm doing this while the router is off, okay? Technically you don't have to do that. You, you can turn the router on and plug it in. I like to do it while the router is off because when the router boots up, it's gonna try and get an internet address from this cable. And if the cable's not plugged in, it won't get the internet address and it makes the router take longer to boot up. So it actually boots a little bit faster when this cable is connected. If you're patient, that doesn't matter. I'm, I'm impatient, so I'm plugging it ahead of time. The other thing that's probably important for me to plug in at this stage is the power connector that I mentioned, right? So I've got that tucked away under my desk here as well. So I'm gonna plug that in. Now, this router has something that not every router does, and that is a power switch. And that power switch means that I can turn this on and off manually. So when I plugged that in, the lights on the front didn't light up. And remember how I said it's important, you need to know some kind of indi <clears throat> indicator to tell that it's turned on. So I know I'm not getting that indicator. Oh, yes, I am. I was being impatient. And it's different than what the book told me. If I look, <laughs> see, the, if we zoom in on that, maybe. Um, I might not be able yeah, to see that, there but it is. there you go. You can see that flashing orange light. What did the book tell me? It said it's going to be flashing white. They lied to me. Deception, <laughs> right? But it is the power indicator. I can see it's flashing. I know that while it's flashing that it is booting up. So I just need to give it some time while it goes through that boot process. And then when it's done, it's going to go solid. Oh. You know what? Actually, they didn't lie, did they? Now it's flashing white. So I actually have a very <laughs> dim flashing white light right there. So that orange part must have been it doing a diagnostic. Now it's flashing white while it boots up. And in a moment, it's going to go solid. All right. Uh, or, or orange. Well, <laughs> this is all part of the boot process. We need to be aware of what this is going to look like when it is working. There we go. Now it's a solid white light. Okay. When it's something different, that indicates a problem. And that's why having a manual is really handy because you need to know, did it get the solid white? If it stayed orange, I might need to call up Linksys and say, hey guys, I've got a router and it's getting an orange light. It's not working, what's going on? And then they'll tell you, oh yeah, we need to replace it under warranty or, or whatever it is. 
But this one did get to the solid white light, just like the book told me. And so now I know that it's up and it's running. So that kind of completes the first stage of getting this router physically wired in my network. Now, I've got it plugged into the internet connection. I've got it plugged into power. I've got it turned on, but I'm not actually connected to it. But before I move beyond that, right? So the next stage will be connecting clients. But before we do that, I want to mention those other ports that were on the back, right? So if I go back to my diagram here on my computer, you'll see where there was a USB 3.0 port and there was a USB slash eSATA port, okay? Many routers these days package extra functionality in them. This one has this, the ability to be a media server. You could put all of your photos and your videos on a USB hard drive and plug it into one of these ports. And when you do that, it then serves those over the network so you can go to like a smart television and see all your family photos or watch your videos. Those are nice features, but they're not built into every router. So you you probably won't have those on, on most. This one just happens to have it, but that's what these extra ports are. It's not standard functionality. It's something that Linksys chose to include in this particular model. And then right beside that is a little tiny reset button. It, it's so small that I can't show it on camera, or at least not effectively, uh, but it's a button that if you hold it down for 10 seconds, it resets the router back to factory default. And that's really useful information to have because what if you screw something up while you're setting it up? Or what if you buy a used router from somebody, one that has already been configured? You can hold that button down, it'll reset the device, and now it's back to the original factory configuration, and you can start over brand new, fresh and clean, and get it set up the way that you want. That's a really handy thing, especially if you're troubleshooting a router. If you don't think it's working right, you can hold that button down and reset it. Now it's running the way the factory wanted it. If it's still not working, then you likely have a hardware issue, so it's a good troubleshooting step. But do be aware when you reset, you lose your old configuration, it's gone. And so if you've done a lot of tweaking and adjustments, you'll have to redo all that, so that, that can be a little bit on the painful side. All right, so at this stage, we've seen physically connecting. There could be one more physical connection, I guess. I wanna configure this router. In order for me to configure it, I need to connect to it. This router has a switch and a wireless access point built into it. So I could connect to the wireless access point and configure it, or I could connect to the switch. I could physically plug in. Now, if I'm at home and I've got my desktop computer right there, then I'll, I'll plug into the physical switch. That's the easiest. Plugging into the physical switch is just plugging in a cable and now you're ready to go. But it's not always an option. Take my laptop, for example. My laptop doesn't have a network jack on it. So if all I have is my laptop and I want to configure this router, I've got two choices, right? Choice number one is I could get a USB network adapter. Uh, I have one which is in apparently the tightest USB port on the planet. There we go. Uh, so this is a USB network adapter. I can plug it into a USB port on my laptop and it gives me a network connection. And I can use that to then plug into the router and get it configured. Well, I have one of these laying around because I work with networks a lot. But if you're the average Joe on the street, you probably don't have one of these laying around, so that's not really an option for you. So in that case, most of these wireless routers start advertising a wireless network right from the very beginning. And you can connect via that wireless network and start the configuration that way. All right, now that sounds like a good thing. Anybody can do that. But there's a big security risk here. If I were to walk away from this router right now and just leave it like it is, all right, it has some default wireless uh, setting, you know, whatever the network is it's advertising. It has a default password on it, and it's plugged into my internet connection, right? So anybody out in the parking lot, anybody else in this building, anybody nearby could connect to this wireless network, and now they're on my network and getting access that I don't want them to have. So that wireless connectivity can be a bit risky. On commercial grade routers, they'll have that turned off by default. You have to physically plug in. So if you're getting into networking for a career, you'll wanna buy a couple of these. They're not expensive, but you'll wanna have one handy. But if you're just doing this at home, you might wanna consider leaving the internet connection unplugged while you do your initial setup. That way nobody can jump on the wireless network and then start using your internet connection without your authorization. And once you get a good password assigned and things like that, then you turn on the internet connection. So you can kind of change the order to do it a little more securely. For me, I've been, uh, actually, I've been blabbing here for several minutes now, so I've, I've given an attacker plenty of opportunity to be able to jump on this, and they, they could already be in there. Things like default settings are taken advantage of by a number of attackers that are out there. 
So we've got to take that into account. When I get this set up, my, my mind, I might be thinking, okay, I've got to get where the kids can stream Netflix as fast as I can because otherwise I'm going to have a revolt, right? That might be my number one goal. But we need to stop and think, you know what? My number one goal is to make sure this network is secure and that nobody can just jump on it and cause problems. And then I'll get the kids streaming Netflix afterwards. And it's hard to get our mindset that way. But so many people don't do that that you're hearing about people's networks getting compromised left and right, just all over the place. And so we certainly don't want that. So um, this one's up. It's running. I mentioned that that wireless network that it creates. Let me jump over here. I want to show you. Um, so here, this is my laptop. And I'm, I'm connected to our IT Pro TV wireless network, right? That's our, our, our network here in the building. But if I look down, here's Linksys 062095 gigahertz. I, I didn't make that network, right? But I plugged in this router, and it has made that network. It's advertising it. It's a default. It's just called Linksys, right? Look at these other wireless networks that are out here, like uh, Gainesville Dev Academy or, or IT Pro TV. Those could be Linksys routers. Well, IT Pro TV ones aren't. I, I don't know about. Actually, I think that Gainesville Dev Academy, that, that might actually be a Linksys router. Um, but they've changed the name. When they set it up, they change the name, and they put a password on it. That's the lock that's right there. When you look at some of the other ones, they may or may not have that. When I look at the Linksys, oh, it, it's actually got a lock on it. So that, that, that might actually be one of our, our neighbors, and I'm not seeing this one over here. But you can spot those networks, and that's where our real risk comes in. If there's no lock attached to it, then that can create a problem. All right, so Don, how are we actually going to connect to this now that you've shown us at least that there's a, a wireless access uh, network on there? Sure. So these devices, they have a whole management interface, right? It's usually like a web page or it might be software you have to install that lets you get in there and connect to them. Most of them these days have a web page that you use to configure it. So I need to get there. Well, if I'm going to connect wirelessly, then I'll need to connect to that wireless network like we saw a moment ago. If it has a lock on it, like mine does, then you need to go to the instruction manual and find out what that password is so you can connect. If it doesn't have a lock on it, you can just connect and it's no big deal. Or if you're going to cable in, you need to plug in the, the cable. And so that's what I'm going to do here on the show is I've got a, an extra cable. And when you buy these routers, they normally come with them. If they don't, this is just a standard Category 5 or Category 6 networking cable. You can buy these at pretty much any store. They're always overpriced at the store, though. So try not to lose your cables. Uh, but basically, I'm going to take this. I'm going to plug one end into the network adapter on my laptop. And then I'll take the other end, and I'll plug that into our nice, shiny router. And I'm going to just run this around and try and not hit my microphone. Uh, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in. Now, I just happen to have a blue cable. I didn't do that on purpose. It's what we found before the show. Um, but I'm going to plug into one of those blue ports on the back of the router. Those blue ports were the network switch, right? So that I mentioned these were designed for like our, our home devices, our, our PCs, printers, all that other good stuff. That's just going to go in here. There's four ports on this one. Yours could have five, eight, ten, who knows? Depending on the model you buy, they have more. Some just have one. But it doesn't really matter which port I plug into. On a switch, all the ports are treated the same. Um, I, I do get a little uh, perfectionist every now and then. I say it's got to go in port number one, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of times they're numbered backwards. This one is where one is over here and four is over here, so that's kind of confusing. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and plug right in to number one like that. The other end is plugged into my computer. So now I'm plugged into the router. And if you're if you're able to, we can't really see it because it's dim here. Well, no, you can see that. It's flashing right there. That flashing T that's indicating that port one just went hot. And so it's up and it's going. That flash is my laptop trying to talk on the connection. So I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm in a uh, connected state at this point. So now that I'm connected, all right, I'm, I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi on my laptop so that all I have is that, that network connection. My laptop is going to start talking to that router, and it's going to say, hey, I want to talk to you, but I don't know your configuration. Can you help me out? And there's a protocol that runs in the background called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. And DHCP it allows the router to automatically configure my laptop, to tell my laptop how to get set up. And that should be happening automatically in the background right now. In fact, if we want to see that, I can go into my system preferences and into my network setting. And here I can see I've got this, uh, my network adapter is made by a company called Anker. Uh, and so I've got this Anker adapter and I can see it's using DHCP and my laptop has an address of 192.168.1.189. And then right beneath that I can see 
the router is 192.168.1.1. So I know my address and I know the router's address. And since I know the router's address, I can browse to it and I can access that management interface. Now, there are different ways of doing this. The IP is normally sufficient to get to it, right? So if I want to try that out, I can jump over to my web browser and I can browse to 192.168.1.1. And I can type that and hopefully I get a Linksys smart Wi-Fi web page, right? Here's the management interface for it. Now I did it by number. They're not all like that. In fact, a lot of vendors have started going to a naming system. And if I were to go back to the user manual for this router, when you get to the setting up basics in here and it tells you you want to plug in and, and browse to the router, it doesn't tell me to browse to an IP. It tells me to browse to linksysmartwifi.com to a web page. Right? Well, if my internet connection isn't set up, how does that even work? Well, the router is listening out for any connection that's going to linksysmartwifi.com. And so I could open up a web page and I could type in http colon slash slash linksysmartwifi.com. And assuming that I spell, spelled it right, I get the same page. Okay. And I didn't have to know the IP address. If I have the user manual, stuff like this is really handy. But even if I didn't have the user manual, I was able to use my network settings here to figure out what the IP address of that router was and use that to be able to pull up the page. That's really useful when you buy a used router because well, what did I say at the beginning of the episode? You should download your manual. Yeah. Well, if you're trying to set up an internet connection, you might not be able to download anything. And, and we're, we're kind of spoiled these days because you probably have a cell phone and you can look it up that way. But if you have no internet access, then it's going to be hard to look things up. Here's a chance for us to kind of just figure out what that setting is. Now, once we get to this page, we need to log in and work with the system. Okay. Now, I will tell you that a lot of routers have started doing more than one type of configuration. Some of them have where you configure the router directly. In fact, I would say most of them do. But others, like Linksys, they have a system where you can use what's called a Linksys Smart Wi-Fi account. And that's where the system is managed by their servers, okay? Where you go to their web page and you configure on there and then they push the configuration down to your router. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I don't want somebody else configuring my devices for me. I want to configure them myself. Um, but if you're setting this up for like a grandparent or whatever, uh, it's nice that they don't have to learn how to work with the router. It can just be set up. And if anything needs changing, you could always go and log into a centralized website and make those changes for them. It really helps to support other people. But for me, I want to set it up myself. So I just need to access the router by typing in the router password. Now, <laughs> here comes the challenging part. What's the router password? <laughs> well, you, you might not know it, right? If you got this from somebody else, then hopefully they told you the password. If this is a brand new device, though, it likely has a default password. And the most common one is the word admin, just A-D-M-I-N, it's short for administrator. And most wireless routers use that as a default password. That's good and bad. On a good side, I can usually guess the default password to get in. On a bad side, every attacker in the world knows that too. If I leave this router configured the default way, attackers already know my password and they can use that to compromise the router. And just like we saw where the router intercepted this domain name, an attacker would be able to intercept any of your communications if they take over your router. That's really, really bad. So we need to make sure that, that password gets changed. If you don't know the password and you try admin and it doesn't work, then it's off to the manual for you, right? When you go to the user manual, in here it will tell you what that default password is to get logged in. If you've got a smart Wi-Fi account, that's what you're logging in with. Otherwise, you're just going to log in as that administrator account, all right? And when I go in here to get that set up, I'm just going to try admin here and get logged in. And there we go. We see that it worked. I got logged in with just the word admin. <laughs> So now I'm in the router, and remember those wireless networks that I saw a moment ago and I said those are likely this router? There's always a possibility it was somebody else's. Well, I can see right here they weren't somebody else's. Here's that Linksys 06209 and 06209 5 gigahertz. So I see those two wireless networks, and they're there. So I got the router powered up. I'm plugged into it. I'm in the admin interface. Technically, it's up and running. I've got green lights down here for my wireless. It shows that I have one client connected. 
up here it's showing my internet connectivity is good. I plugged in that cable, it's self-configured. Technically, I'm done, right? I, I could walk away right here and, and know that this is set up, right? But if I do that, I'm really gonna regret it, right? There's still a lot more that we need to configure on this to get set up the way that we actually want it to function. We need to do things like change the administrator password. We need to change the name of those wireless networks to something that's actually meaningful. We need to change the password of those wireless networks. We need to do updates. See, I'm getting a warning up here. There's a firmware update. We need to update the router to the latest firmware. These are all things that need to be done with an initial configuration. But Ronnie's giving me the, the look over here that I'm running low on time. So why don't we do this? We'll, we'll stop here. That's part one. Technically, we achieved our goal. Right. We, we turned on a wireless router. But in part two, we're going to go in and make all the little configuration changes we need to do to know that this router is configured the right way, it's ready to put in production, and we can rely on it to keep us safe, secure, and yet still give us internet access. All right, Don, we'll help. Uh, thank you for helping us to get at least this far as we're starting to take a look at configuring the wireless router. But there is a part two, and there's a lot more for us to configure. So, Don, last word on what we've actually done so far. All right, key thing to remember is I have been talking about Linksys this whole time because that's the router I've got sitting beside me. The steps we're going through here really are basically the same no matter what vendor you purchase. So, D Link, Netgear, TP Link, any of them, uh, it's kind of up to you. And a lot of people ask me which one is my preferred brand. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, over the years, they've all kind of become the same. Uh, I normally go with Linksys because they typically last a little longer. These things, they burn out. It, it's rare to have one of these routers last more than two years. Um, so you just kind of get in the habit of replacing them. Uh, so I kind of stick with, with Linksys, but it, they really are all manufactured the same. Uh, I think Asus right now is making some of the best ones for home and small office, but they are expensive. So it does come down to uh, price in a lot of decisions. All right, well, this is a great place for us to sign off as well. For IT Pro TV, I'm your host, Ronnie Wong. And I'm Don Pazette. Stay tuned for the part two here on Configuring a Wireless Router. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.